Hi everybody, this is Kwabana with OpenMV, and today I'm going to be talking about the OpenMV Cam H7 and the new FLIR add-on board that we're going to be having. Uh, so pretty much everything is now ready for the OpenMV Cam H7 to be kickstarted. Um, I just wanted to talk to you quickly today about our new OpenMV Cam FLIR module support. Um, this is probably going to be one of our coolest features for the OpenMV Cam H7. Uh, basically, you can now, besides for removable camera modules, um, like a uh, OV7725 camera module and a uh, MT uh, global shutter sensor, you know, um, given that the uh, lens mounts are on both of them, they don't look particularly different. Um, anyway, but one of our coolest features is going to be the new FLIR module support. So, boom, you can take this guy off um, from our removable camera module base, and we've got the whole FLIR sensor um, with the power supplies and everything wrapped up into a tiny little nice package like this. Um, and so here, right now, we've got a FLIR Lepton 3 sitting on here, and we're going to be demonstrating that today. Um, our sensor also, oh, our uh, packaging also works with the Lepton 1 and 2. Um, so pretty much you're going to be able to plug in any Lepton you have lying around into one of our carrier boards, and you will automatically have thermal vision without any more effort on your part. Great. So, let's uh, get started and see a demo of this. All right, folks, so demo time now. So I've got the OpenMV Cam H7 here with the FLIR Lepton uh, V1 sensor. Um, and so with the OpenMV Cam, you're gonna now have the nicest experience possible with the FLIR Lepton uh, sensors. Uh, there's no more software configuration or anything um, necessary to use them, um, like previously with the pure thermal Lepton boards that you had to use with the Raspberry Pi or uh, BeagleBone Black. Um, now you're just going to be able to pop your Lepton into our uh, adapter board and plug it into your OpenMV cam and you're instantly going to have access to video. Um, all of the driver issues and synchronizing with the Lepton and getting it to boot and everything like that we've taken care of. Um, and of course, you know, all, all this stuff is baked into the firmware so you don't have to deal with uh, how to initialize that or anything. Um, best of all, uh, the FLIR Lepton is pretty much seamlessly supported by our uh, camera system. So notice that this is the uh, standard untitled uh, new program that gets generated when you hit the new button. There's no changes. Um, so we just kind of treat the FLIR Lepton as a new data source and we figure out all the details for you. Um, anyway, so welcome to thermal imaging. Things look cool. So you can see my hand right here. It's kind of cold compared to my head. If I take off my glasses, you know, without uh, glasses on, faces look really creepy because your eyes don't quite stand out. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so welcome to the thermal imaging world. And we hope a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with this, with the op new OpenMV Cam H7. Um, now, let's switch over to uh, something, a useful example. Um, so, you know, thermal images of the color look great. Um, you can have fun on them with it. You can have fun with them, with them for that. Uh, for actual usage scenarios, though, you're going to want to switch over to grayscale and then utilize our blob tracking functionality, which is the best feature our OpenMV Cam operates at. Um, so with blob tracking, you're going to be able to do about uh, 30 FPS, effectively, the Flare Lepton V1 for uh, tracking colors. Well, sorry, really like 9 to 8 FPS, really. But anyway, so yeah. As you can see, this guy can pick out my head there, and he uh, sees two how you know he sees um, pretty much. If I take my glasses off, he can uh, make out my head and my face. Great. Uh, and so now you can you know easily build a system that detects people, detects hot objects, whatever. Super trivial now with the OpenMV Cam H7. You can just take our blob tracking code, put together a system that detects hot objects, and instantly uh, then drive some I/O pins based on that. Super cool. Um, additionally, now that we have the uh, neural network support working, you're going to be able to record videos using the uh, video record functionality within OpenMV IDE. And uh, then you can actually specify because we're using, um, uh, what is it, uh, because we're using FFmpeg as the back end, you can actually put like a percent sign. Now if you do something like uh, percent 2D dot, you know, JPEG, um, and you click save, what will happen is FFmpeg will actually take that video we just recorded and create a whole bunch of pictures from that. And then you can feed that into your uh, neural network training system and get to you know, creating some filters, um, some networks uh, to detect people or whatever based on the uh, thermal imagery. Um, I'm not sure if there exists a uh, large data set for people for this kind of stuff yet, but um, let's go make it. Uh, anyway, 
So that's the uh, that's thermal imaging with the new Open MV Cam. Now, one question you'll note is you can see the image is kind of more or less adaptively changing the uh, thresholds based on what's in the field of view. Uh, so what we're going to be offering also is a um, pretty much uh, the entire FLIR API is going to be available on the OpenMV Cam. So we've got uh, all of the FLIR code um, built into uh, our firmware already. So what we're going to do is add a new uh, Lepton module that lets you control all the functionality of the FLIR uh, from, you know, pretty much from uh, the OpenMV Cam in Python. And that's going to make your life uh, really easy. All right, great. Um, yeah. So moving on, uh, let's check out the FLIR Lepton 3. So we support both the 1, 2, and 3. The FLIR Leptons 1 and 2, those both utilize the same uh, 80 by 60 output, but the FLIR Lepton 3 switches over to uh, 160 by 120. Note that we also do support the radiometric FLIRs also. Uh, those ones, though, you cannot use the radiometric functionality. Uh, with the um, AGC support enabled. So right now, like the image is doing auto gain to make it so all the uh, heat sources kind of look the same or the same kind of brightness. Um, you'd have to turn off that functionality if you wanted to uh, utilize the um, radiometric feature. But you will be able to, at minimum, be able to get the temperature of uh, what's the minimum temperature and max in a field of view and then uh, scale things based on that and uh, figure out the individual temperature of objects you detect in the field of view, uh, given their um, you know, grayscale value compared to the min and max temperature range. All right, so let's switch over to the FLIR Lepton 3. Um, so one thing to note is when you're switching um, Lepton sensors, you have to uh, unplug the uh, camera from the computer. Uh, you do not want to uh, leave the camera plugged in and uh, try to switch the sensor while the camera is running. That is not good for the computer, well, the camera. Anyway, great. All right, so we're popping open again, and let's switch to the FLIR Lepton 3. So one thing to note about the FLIR Lepton 3 is it takes a little bit longer to get operational than the FLIR Leptons 1 and 2. Let me just try something else real quick. All right, great. So here we got the FLIR Lepton 3. Um, so as you can see, the image quality has gotten a lot better. However, the FLIR Lepton 3, while it should be an upgrade, it's actually a little bit more disappointing to use than the FLIR Leptons uh, 1. Um, so the FLIR Lepton 3 has a shutter on it, um, which it does uh, uh, flat field correction. Um, and so every time you saw that uh, stop, where it like, uh, stopped for about a second, um, what actually happened was the FLIR Lepton had closed its shutter and uh, corrected, like right now, it's um, doing something called flat field correction, where it um, closes a shutter and it looks at a, uh, you know, the back of a shutter, which has a solid temperature. And then it's able to figure out what pixels are, uh, you know, it's able to figure out how to uh, map a negative image to subtract from the actual image data stream to, to uh, re you know, remove any um, variances in the image output. Um, unfortunately, it does that automatically quite a lot. And um, additionally, the FLIR Lepton 3 does not generate the extra dummy frames like the uh, FLIR Lepton 1 anymore. It's strictly limited to its, uh, you know, eight, about 9 FPS output. So you're going to see the frame rate um, falls using the FLIR Lepton 3 from, uh, nine, from 25 FPS or so to uh, 8. Um, now the FLIR Lepton 3, the actual uh, spec, it, it does technically generate these uh, dummy outputs. Um, it generates extra frames, but they're garbage, though, so um, you're not able to use them. But at minimum, though, with the FLIR Lepton 3, you will get at least the better resolution if you really needed that. So if you need to see something farther away, you're definitely going to have that feature. Um, otherwise, I would uh, actually recommend to stay clear of the Lepton 3 if you don't need the extra resolution, just because it's a little bit more tricky to use. Um, anyway. Uh, all right, well, that's all, folks. Uh, thank you for watching this demo. I hope you're excited about the new uh, FLIR func functionality with the new FLIR Lepton 1 and FLIR Lepton 2 sensors. All right. Um, anyway, and as you can see, also, you know, both the 1 and 2 and 3 are pretty much handled seamlessly with our new software package. Um, great. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. All right.